one. We're going to learn about how to name binary molecular compounds today. So I want to reiterate a couple of things to you. Um, we see the word binary um, with ionic compounds, with the molecular compounds, and also with our acids. So don't just associate binary with one type of compound. Binary simply means that the compound is made up of two elements. Remember, bi means two. Recall also that we talked about the covalent bonding where they share their valence electrons. Covalent bonding occurs in compounds known as molecular compounds where you have nonmetals present only. So there will be no metal um, in a molecular compound. There will be no polyatomic ions. Ions are only found in ionic compounds because it's the ions, the opposite charges that holds those together. With molecular compounds, they have covalent bonding, and so they share their electrons. There are no ions present. So there's a totally different nomenclature system that we use in naming these compounds. Remember again, covalent bonds occur when bonds, uh, or when the electrons are shared between the nonmetals. So it's a bond resulting from the sharing of electron pairs. In order to name molecular compounds, we must know our prefixes. And these are pretty simple. Um, for uh, one, we use the prefix mono if one atom is present. For two, di. For three, tri. We use tetra for four, penta for five, think of a pentagon, hexa for six, hepta for seven, octa eight, Nona for nine and deca ten. So these are the prefixes that we will use when we're naming molecular compounds. Again, these are when you have only nonmetals present. This is the pattern that we use to name our molecular compounds. Remember, these are binary. So I've got two boxes. The first box represents your first nonmetal, what you do to it, and the second box represents your second nonmetal and what how you would name it. So for the first element in your binary molecular compounds, you use the prefix only if there's a subscript. So if there's more than one, you need a prefix on the first element. And then you simply name your first element. You do not change anything about the name of the element. You name the entire full name of the element. Now for the second element, you always will use a prefix with your molecular compounds. And then similar to how we would name ionic, binary ionic compounds, you take the root name of the second element and you add the ending I, D, E. So in an example here, you see the formula P, B, R, 5. Now, of course, you'd want to have your periodic table out until you get really comfortable with knowing um, off the top of your head what your nonmetals and nonmetals, uh, metals and nonmetals are. So phosphorus is a nonmetal and bromine also a nonmetal. So this is a molecular compound. We will name it using the prefix system. So to name this compound, since there's only one phosphorus, we do not need a prefix because there's not a subscript. So you just would simply say phosphorus. And then notice there are five bromines, and your second element always has a prefix. So five, we use penta. So pentabromide. So, and the reason is because there's five bromines present. So let's try some. These are all molecular compounds. Notice the first element is a nonmetal and the second element is a nonmetal. So you use the prefix system when you have only nonmetals present. So remember, if there's only one of the first element, you do not need a prefix. So we simply name this carbon. And the second element in your molecular compound must always have a prefix. So there's one oxygen. So we use mono. And so Bring it together, you get monoxide. So y'all are familiar with the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Now with this one, you have mono, ends in an O, and then oxide would be your root name plus side for oxygen. When you have two O's coming together, 
you drop the O off with the prefix, so you end up saying monoxide, not monoxide. Carbon monoxide. On the second one, you have one carbon again, so there's no prefix needed, so we would say carbon. And here we have two oxygens, so we would use the prefix, that's right, di. So dioxide. On example three, we have two nitrogens, so here we would need a prefix on our first element. So with this system, when you have a molecular compound, you use the prefix on the first element when there's more than one. So there's two nitrogens, so the prefix for two, we said it's di. So we would call this dinitrogen. Notice we don't change nitrogen's name. The first element never gets a name change at the end. Dinitrogen and then two, so di oxide. All right, pause the video and try the others on your own, the next three, and then resume the video and see how you did. Here on number four, nitrogen. You did not need a prefix because there's only one nitrogen. Always use a prefix on the second element, so we have three, so we, the prefix for three is tri, like a triangle. Tri, and then we have oxygen, so trioxide. This is a pretty simple system of naming with the moleculars. Now, of course, we know this next compound is water, but we want to use the proper naming system, so let's um, follow the prefix system. We have two hydrogens, so we'd say dihydrogen. And then there's one oxygen, and you always use a prefix on the second element, so we'll say mono, so monoxide. All right, number six. This is xenon, so X-E-N-O-N, -N, no prefix needed. And there's four. Prefix for four is tetra, so tetrafluoride. All right, so that's naming these molecular compounds. Writing your formulas is just as easy. These formulas exactly match their name. So they're not like ionics. We're not crisscrossing anything here. There's no charges at all to crisscross. These are nonmetals. So nitrogen, there's no prefix, so you would put one nitrogen. You understand there's one nitrogen if there's no prefix on the first element. And here we see mono. So how many oxygens would there be here then? Mono means one. That's right. So O, and there's one oxygen. So the ones are understood. Nitrogen monoxide is NO. Here we see tetra and mono, so we're going to name, um, write our formula straight from the name. Tetra iodine means that there are four iodines, so we'll say I, subscript four. Mono means one, so mono bromide would be one bromine. Okay, so that's the lesson on naming molecular compounds.